Chapter 2 The Origin of the White Race After the destruction of mankind by the flood, Noah and his wife, his three sons, and their wives were the only people that were saved. The sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, or Japheth. From these three sons of Noah was the whole earth populated. The ark rested on Mount Ararat. Mount Ararat was located in the land of Armenia. The words Armenia and Ararat mean high ground. The entire earth at this time was of one speech and one language. Most of the people dwelled in the plain of Shinar in Hebrew, the valley of Shinar. Men began to congregate in the territory and to build a tower up to heaven. The Jewish historian Flavius Josephus says, God also commanded them to send colonies abroad for the thorough peopling of the earth. But the people did not obey God. Now when man was in the process of building the tower, God disapproved of its construction because it showed a disbelief in his word. The divine had promised Noah that he would not destroy the earth by water again. Nimrod, the Ethiopian, was the leader of the conspiracy against God. He was a mighty man and a conqueror. He held the people under his dictatorship. When God considered what had been done, he confused men's language and scattered them toward the four directions of the earth. The sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, or Japheth. Because the world was populated from these three sons of Noah, it is proper to classify men only according to this classification, Shemites, Hamites, and Japhites, or Japhites, and not Caucasoid, Mongoloid, or Negroid. The latter category is a modern anthropological classification that we will deal with more thoroughly later. The parts of the earth inhabited by the children of Shem were parts of the territory of Assyria and Elam, Persia, east of the Tigris River, the eastern part of Syria, and parts of the Arabian Peninsula. All the children of Shem were black. This position will be supported by arguments and facts later. The second classification of mankind was the Hamites, who controlled the great centers of civilization in ancient time, 4000 BC, soon after the flood. This civilization included the continent of Africa, the land of Canaan, Israel, parts of Arabia, Syria, Phoenicia, Turkey, Babylonia, southern Persia, Iran, east Pakistan, and a large part of India. The third classification of mankind was the Japhites from, from Japheth, who was the youngest son of Noah. The offspring of Japheth occupied the isles of the Gentiles, the shore territories of the Mediterranean Sea in Europe and parts of Asia Minor, where they dispersed northward over the entire continent of Europe and a great part of Asia. After Noah's Ark rested on the mountain of Ararat and the dispersal of the children of men at the Tower of Babel, Japheth's descendants, 
traveled west, north, and northeast of the mountain of Ararat and the Caucasus Mountains. The Jephites settled near the mountain Taurus and Ammons in Turkey. They journeyed to the river Tanaeus in southeast Russia and along Europe to Cadiz, Spain. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras. Genesis 10.2 Gomer was the ancestor of the first Shimerian and of the latter Kimbri, including the other offshoots of the Celtic family and of the present day Gales of Ireland, Scotland, and the Hebrides Islands. The Cimmerians were described by Homer the Greek as dwelling in a remote place of mist and gloom. This place was located north of the Black Sea. The second son of Japheth was Magog, the father of the Magorites, or the Magog, the Magogites. Flavius Josephus said that the Greeks called these people Scythians. The Scythians included all the wandering tribes who dwelt mostly near the north of the Black and Caspian Seas. They were regarded by the ancients as tremendously lacking in intelligence and civilization. The third son of Japheth was Madai, the father of Medes. They were located at the southern part of the Caspian Sea, and they later united with the Persians to form one race. From Javan, the fourth son of Japheth, came the Ionians and all the Greeks. Tubal, the fifth son of Japheth, is associated with Javan, Isaiah 66, 19, Meshach and Tubal, Ezekiel 32, 26 and 39, 1, are nations of the north, north of the focal point of the land of Israel. Josephus identified the descendants of Tubal with the early in Iberians, Ebris. They were the inhabitants of territory between the Caspian and Exine Seas, which is Georgia in southern Russia. The last son of Japheth was Tiras, the father or ancestor of the Thracians. This land, Thrace, was situated north of Turkey, Asia Minor, and northeast of Greece. Japheth's grandson, Askenaz, formed the Germanic race. The Hebrew language, the word, in the Hebrew language, the word means German. By 378 AD, the Germanic tribes were on the move. They were known under these names, Lombards, Burgundians, Franks, Saxons, Angles, Jutes, Ostrogoths, Visigoths, Snavis, and Vandals. These 10 Germanic barbarian tribes settled all over Western Europe and intermingled with modern nations of Western Europe as we know them today. All these tribes were the descendants of Japheth. The ancient people did not classify race, races according to the skin color, like the modern nations of Europe and America. 
the ancients, including the Greeks and Romans, identified people according to their national or tribal names. They used such names as Visigoths, Vandals, Saxons, Ethiopians, Carth Carth Carthaginians, Jews, Arabs, Persians, Babylonians, Egyptians, and Moors. They did not use the term Negro, which is a modern term to refer to the black races or the word Caucasian to refer to the white races. Dividing the world along a color line was an idea that originated with the white supremacists in Europe after the Renaissance. The Europeans did not have any great civilization immediately after the fall of Greece and Rome. During the Middle Ages, the black nations of Africa and Asia had the greatest political, economical, educational, and military influence in the world. At this time, Europe existed in a state of darkness for a thousand years. In the 17th century and later, Europe began to emerge out of the sloth of ignorance and certain Germans and others conceived of themselves as belonging to a superior race. Johann F. Blumenbach, a German, 1752 to 1840, was the first to divide humanity on the basis of skin color. Up to this time, no such attempts has been made. His classification set up a not set up a color line to the detriment of latter generations. Mr. Blumenbach classified five chief races of mankind: the Caucasian, the Mongolian, the Ethiopian, the American, American Indians, and Malayan. Moreover, he considered the Caucasian to be the original race. Blumenbach, the anthropologic, anthrop anthropologist, named the whites after the Caucasus Mountains. These mountains are situated between the Black and Caspian Seas because he thought the purest white people originated there. Blumenbach was a racist, and so was J.A. Gobinio, a third man by the name of H.S. Chamberlain, wanted to advance the supremacy of the white Nordic race and its culture. These men attributed psychological value and importance to race. This was racism and it led to a horrible, vicious racial philosophy and to the persecution of the Jews in Nazi Germany. T.R. Garth wrote in his book, Race Psychology, 1931, any disposition on our part to withhold from some race the right to a free and full development must be taken as an indication of nationalization on the account of race prejudice. And such an attitude is inexcusable in an intelligent populace. As I have proven, the earliest civilizations began in North Africa and the Middle East among the black races. Read about the Black Asiatics in Herbert Wentz, It Began in Babel, A Hook on the Origin of Races, pages 125 through 129 and page 368. We have more than adequate proof that the white races began near the Caucasus Mountains and from there they spread north 
northwest and northeast into Europe and Asiatic Russia. Now we know that the, the Japhites, Europeans, are white today. Where, where they originally were, they originally white, beginning from their ancestor, Japheth, or did a change materialize in the skin color of the descendants of Japheth? This question is difficult to answer. I was told that Japheth was a black man, but he wanted to be white. So God changed him to a white man. Evidence to that theory is lacking. Nevertheless, scientists and anthropologists have found different kinds of mutations in certain parts of the world. A physical mutation is a sudden variation or change, the offspring differing from its parents in some outstanding characteristic, also a major change in the chromosomes or genes that determine heredity. Blonde hair among the black Australian Aborigines is an example of a mutation. And probably albinos are a good example of mutations with their white skin, woolly hair, and thick lips, and Ethiopian noses. Any sudden change from the normal is to be regarded as a mutation. Other examples of mutations are blondism or whiteness among monkeys, apes, and chimpanzees. Major mutations or changes took place among the descendants of Japheth. This is obvious because of their white skin. In other words, they were black at one time, but their skin changed to white. This phenomenon can be understood in view of the total world population. Over two thirds of the population of the world consists of colored people. That is a ratio of two to one. Two out of Noah's three sons remained black. We know this to be true because many of the people throughout Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the islands in the Pacific Ocean are yellow, brown, or black. They have facial features like the Congoid Africans, especially the Vietnamese, Filipinos, the people of India, They are a mixture of black Dravidians and Indo-Europeans. Thailanders, Burmese, Indonesians, Guineans, Sumatrans, and the Aborigines of Australia, etc. You can get a good idea of the features of these people by reading the geographical magazines and observing the foreign students who come from these countries. There was an Indo-European invasion, Germanic, of the Middle East between the years 2000 and 1500 BC. These Germanic tribes intermingled with the black people everywhere. They traveled. This mingling made the people in Syria, Babylon, Assyria, Persia, India, and parts of Arabia, much lighter in complexion. Now the color of the people in this region ranges from brown to yellow. The Greek and Roman invasions also made these people in the Middle East lighter. Another fact we should not forget is that the Moors and Arabs from North Africa captured and raped European women. As a result of the North Africans, as a result, the North Africans became lighter. At one time, these people in North Africa and the Middle East were all black. Whites have intermingled their blood with blacks in Asia, Africa, and the Western Hemisphere. 
In spite of this, the colored people of the world control about three-fourths of the Earth's geographical area. Because the colored people of the world are in a majority, it is proper to infer that the whites have always been a minority and that the black people are the original people of humanity. It is interesting and meaningful to learn that the Japhites, Europeans, traveled northwest, north, and northeast of the mountainous region of the Caucasus. The Caucasians into Europe. It gives me the impression that the Japhites were isolated or that they isolated themselves from the civilization and domination of Nimrod, which began in the land of Mesopotamia. When the Japhites separated at the Tower of Babel, the theory and probability is that they turned white. There are many cases of individuals turning white in Jewish biblical history. When God wanted to show Moses a miracle, he turned his hand white as snow. Then he turned it back again to its original color, black. In ancient Israel, when a man had a white spot in his skin or white or yellow hair or white skin somewhat reddish, he was pronounced unclean. All people who were victims of this shameful disease were isolated outside of the camp or city. Those that had leprosy were called lepers, and they had to shout, unclean, unclean. All people in the ancient world who had yellow hair and leprosy were despised and segregated. This is one reason the white supremacists discriminate against the black people today. Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses and defamed his character because he married an Ethiopian woman. As a punishment, God struck Miriam with leprosy and she turned white as snow. Quote, end quote. Now many people have deceived themselves in thinking that Miriam and Aaron spoke against her because she was a black woman, but this is not the case because Miriam, Aaron, and Moses were all black people. They spoke against Moses because the Ethiopian woman was of a different religion. The color issue did not exist in their day. To prove this point, the Israelites dwelt among the Hamites, Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. They intermarried, quote, all the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam, end quote, the idol God. Because they served the idol Balaam, the God of Israel became angry and sold them into slavery. It was the worshiping of the idols, not the marriages that God disapproved. Marriages were forbidden because God feared that the alien races would persuade the Israelites to worship their idols. But in Moses' case, he had converted the Ethiopian woman to his religion. Miriam and Aaron used the Ethiopian woman as an excuse to challenge Moses' authority. It was a family dispute of jealousy among the three of them. Moreover, Miriam and Aaron were older than Moses. They said, quote, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? Quote, end quote. And the Lord heard it. In another case of leprosy, God showed Moses some miracles to display to the children of Israel that they would believe 
that Moses was sent by God. In this case, Moses' hand turned white. Naaman and Gehazi had leprosy. I will write a summary of this story. Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He acquired leprosy, boils and whitening of the skin. He wanted to be cured. Then he heard about Elisha, the prophet. Elisha told him to dip seven times in the Jordan River. Naaman obeyed and he was cured. A reward was offered Elisha, but he refused it. A servant of Elisha named Gehazi wanted the reward that his master, Elisha, refused. Then Gehazi ran to look for Naaman. When he found him, he asked him for the reward and said that his master had sent him. This, of course, was a lie. When Gehazi returned to Elisha, Elisha said, quote, I know you have gotten garments, olive yards, and all kinds of wealth by means of subterfuge. Therefore, the leprosy that Naaman had will cleave unto you and unto your seed descendant forever. End quote. And he departed from his presence a leper, quote, as white as snow, end quote. This type of leprosy affected the reproductive organs, genes, and chromosomes that determine hered hereditary characteristics in his body. This meant all his children would produce white offspring even though he was a black man at first. This was the curse of Gehazi. End of chapter 2